Hello, internet people of internet. How are you doing? This is the Woman Toasty Club. This is the latest online memory afternoon, episode 95. Ever closer to that big one. Oh, oh. Has life been treating you good? I just was looking out the window there thinking, hmm, it's sunshine, but it's kind of a bit sunshine and then overcast. How's the weather on your life? Is your life in sunshine? Is it in drizzle? Get out of it, fly. Uh, we've got a lovely show for you this afternoon, and we're so pleased to be back with you on a Friday afternoon. So I was getting up really close to you on the camera. Sorry about that. Um, for anyone affected, we will have a session after the show. Um, we've got the retro raffle, of course, coming up this afternoon. We've got memory of the week. A lot of 70s stuff this week. Um, hope you uh, like the 70s or around in the 70s or can remember them even if you can't, and like the young people, like our young guest, Aidan Johnson, don't know if he'll know about the 70s, probably mm, probably born in the 90s or something like that. We've got light evening snack of the week. Yes, it's back. Yes, indeed. It's going to be great. We've got Jeanette's poem of the week. Yeah, AD hopefully will be singing a few songs. We've got some few technical issues, hence why we've not got our Tom with us just yet. So I'm going to bring forth the lovely Jeanette Lyons. She's the one. In Tom's absence, it's just me and Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, Jono. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all well. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Marvellous. You had a good week? Or four I had a good week. Well, yeah. You know what I did? Three weeks ago, um, Lorraine and I, my sister and I, joined a gym. And so we go early on, very early, like quarter past six in the morning. There are two six o'clocks in the same day, apparently. Right. And um, we started going to, walking to the gym and uh, doing swimming because my hip's a bit sore at the moment. So I've had to stop ballet and do mm. swimming. And so for three weeks now, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday mornings, including today, uh, we go and swim. And uh, 30 lengths is what I do. Three days a week, I do thirty laps wow, in the morning. Great. Yeah, and I, and it's making me feel fabulous. I mean, I, we did Pilates class last night. Not going to bother with that again. It was too much like ballet. They were making her do plies. <laughs> so hang on, this is why I've stopped ballet because my hip hurts. Mm. So I went. We did it. You know, it was an hour of that. But joining a gym, it's a good thing for now. Oh, so you feel good about it? You don't feel totally exhausted. No, I, I ache like help, <laughs> but I don't mind. You know, we, we're not dreading getting up in the morning. You know, the alarm goes off at six. We're out of the house by quarter past six. We walk to the gym, swim, come back, and we're home by half seven. And so 30 lengths in 30 minutes is what I do. Wow. And we feel great. It's, it's just really kind of and starts your day. And when the mornings are lovely, then, yeah, and they are so much brighter now. It's a good thing. I'm not going to turn into a gym. We have to walk through the gym where there's all people on treadmills and rowing things and weights and stuff. And it's like, yeah, look at us going to the gym, <laughs> walking past the gym to the, the lovely warm pool. Oh, so you don't do any gym activities? No. Well, we, like I say, we, we the first day we tried a little bit of a, a bicycle thing, spinning or something. Five minutes we lasted and didn't like that. And mm. then we tried a Pilates class last night because it's all included in our gym membership. And I didn't like that. I wonder how different it is from yoga. So maybe I'll try yoga sometime. But I don't. Oh, I don't know. And we were laughing about the Pilates class because if you change the L to an R, it's pirates class. That sounds much more fun. Yes. I would like that. Yes, can wear a patch, can wear a sort of stripy jumper, drink red and rum. black. <laughs> yeah, drink <laughs> rum. Drink rum. <laughs> Say ha ha. So you're super healthy then? I am. Well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Oh, well done you well done you, Thank I, you. I recommend it it's it's nice gentle exercise so and the, the 30 lengths you do you do that as just you and and lorraine or do you have um a there's teacher? Uh, there's no teacher no there's quite a big pool and the the lengths are 20 meters long <coughs> but there's, there's no deep end it's all the same height so kind of like chest height so you, right. you know lorraine kind of does this thing as well sometimes where she walks in the water so you know that kind of yeah. resistance is quite hard it works on it her is, yeah. It's good for you. so yeah she does that a bit as well so she does more than me she does 40 but you know half of them are running <laughs> so um yeah i, I kind of it's, it's 
and I said there's there's some there's two fast lanes and then there's the wider bit that we go in where you can kind of just faff about and, and just kind of splash and don't get in those wide lanes they'd knock you out of the way well the fast lanes yeah I think they would the people fast really lanes, kind of, yeah no so we go in the other bit and sometimes it gets a little bit crowded there's like two or three other people in there it's a bit like that this morning so uh, you know you don't expect to swim having to go round people but no. I kind of do so hopefully people will get morning. bored yeah I was having to stay we even bought goggles the other day we thought that would help us swimming with our goggles yeah they they one day we wore them <laughs> no that didn't last no i need a snorkel it's the breathing i can't deal with not, yes. not eyes opening water. do remember to breathe when you're swimming that's I really important I, I uncoordinated it a little bit this morning and did swallow some of the pool oh takes me back to my school days well it'll, it'll clean out your insides there's that <laughs> yeah i was going to say hello to everyone hello jenny dr jenny hi elmy hi karen oh karen you're back nice to see you karen Jean, you're back hello good morning steve great to see you all the way from the us of a good day lovelies he says and what is a pirate's favorite letter he asks r <laughs> i'm guessing Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, Steve. Is she right? Yeah. What What I need is a man with a boat, <laughs> a Jolly Roger as well. Oh, st steady. That's, that's the flag. Good. That's the skull and crossbones. All oh, right. It? It was a bit early in the day for that sort of thing. <laughs> Christine, hi. Oh, lovely to see you again. It, Steve says, "Tis the sea." Is that a letter? What's the favourite letter? Oh. Tis Tis the sea. Tis the sea. Ah. Oh, is that is that comedy? <laughs> I don't know. Stay a bit lost on us English, isn't it? Confused. <laughs> dot com. Um, we're still struggling to get our guest on, and that's why Tom's not with us. For anyone that's uh, interested, the screen's not come up yet. Tom, um, he's still on a grey screen at the moment. Um, I don't have to work today, says Karen. Yay! Hey. So That's sometimes right. you have to work on a Fridays then, Karen. That's outrageous. Have you not told them about the club? <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be really nice when none of us have to work anymore and, and we'll just have income and not have to work. I would like that. Just <laughs> bored of working. Yeah, that'd be bored great. Of working. <laughs> yeah. Steve says C. What he meant, he said tis the C and he means C as in the letter. Uh, right? See what he did there. See what he did? He's a clever guy. He's very good. He's very good. Very nice man. Very nice man. Well, while we're waiting for Tom um, to sort out AD, I just hold on. Let's see if we um, if he's still on the phone. Are you still on the phone, Tom? No. Let's welcome our good friend and co-host Tom Hardy. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello. You're in a different position in your home. Am I? Yeah, you like to keep us guessing. I think what you've done, you've turned it a bit to the wall today, the camera, that's all. Yeah. So we can see your lovely shelves. Yeah. Mm, with amplifiers. Oh, uh, Aidy's aharing me, and I can see him. I think he's probably, he's in my under regions downstairs. So you can't see him just yet. But he, we can see you and hear you, Aidy. But I'm just going to carry on for a minute. We've got him on his phone. where you are. Got him on his phone. Yeah. So we... His hair's looking crazy good. That's all I can tell you, people. He'll be coming up soon. A.D. Johnson with his great hair will be along soon. Karen says she has actually told her work, lol, that um, Fridays are mostly for the Warm and Toasty Club. Probably <laughs> they're not listening, <laughs> I'd imagine. Do you want to earn money, Karen? <laughs> Let's do the Retro Raffle. It's the Retro Raffle. It's coming to your screen. Yeehaw, yeehaw. It's the retro raffle never has been seen. Tom, dance. It's the retro raffle. Tom, dance. It's coming, What's the matter with you? It's coming to your screen. Oh, yeah. It's coming. It's coming to your screen. Retro raffle Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, indeed. It's the retro raffle. Tom's yeah. still refusing to dance. He's on strike. <laughs> No, yeah. not doing it. Tom, when you, Tim, Tom, when you were younger mm. and uh, families would gather uh, for celebration of some kind mm. and the kids sometimes would go off and play, 
but sometimes they would dance in little groups. Were you ever part of that little group, Tom? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. I mean, one, they wouldn't invite me. Right. <laughs> uh, but no. no. I would just go off and, um, I don't know, break something, I think. Is Make it? Tonka toys, would you? I don't know where Tonka toys come into my head from. Toys. Make Tonka toys. Play, yeah. with Tonka toys. Play with them and then make things with them. Yeah, big. you could get those big trucks, couldn't you? Yeah, big trucks with um, cranes on in metal. And yeah, go on, Jeanette. Oh, look at her with her hand up at the back. <laughs> Tom, can I ask you a question? No. What age? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what age did you start playing guitar? Because you're one of the best guitarists I know, and I just uh, imagine that you were doing that at an early age rather than mucking about no i didn't uh, probably i don't know probably about 16 i suppose right oh, okay. okay crikey and then as I, I used to say and then i gave up for about 10 15 years and didn't play wow mm -hmm. well you just got good <laughs> while you didn't play no. i could do that <laughs> no, i don't know really i don't think i particularly lost I don't, think I, I don't think I was particularly good. I don't think I'm particularly good now, but I mean, I sort, oh, of, I I sort of didn't really practice for a long time. Um, and I could imagine that I could be a lot better now. I mean, that's the, <laughs> that's the only thing I sort of think is that I could be a lot better now <laughs> if I'd actually practiced. <laughs> when did you join your first band? Sorry, this is turning into the Tom interview. I'm that's sorry. Okay. Just, Keep going. Keep I going. It's just coming in my head. I'm just trying to make my head smaller on the screen. You carry on. <laughs> I think I, we did have a sort of like very strange little band at school um, that we may have played once, you know, in when I was 16 or whatever. Um, but the the I think the the proper the most the band that I sort of was in for the first sort of properish band was a sort of punk band, yeah. Called, nice. called the Cosmic Spots. The Cosmic Ooh. Spots. Mm. <laughs> Karen Good says time. maybe you played it air, air, with Airfix. I did play with Airfix. I used to I used to like the boats more than the airplanes. So. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, that's lovely to hear. Okay, retro rough. Anything else you want right now? <laughs> yeah, do anything about Tom's life, Jeanette, that you need to know? <laughs> um so Airfix. Is that like air guitar? Oh my god, you haven't lived. See haven't? what I did there? <laughs> See what you did there? Air, no, guitar fix. Should be air guitars. Air guitar fix. <laughs> air guitar fix. We probably did those models as well as the air. Oh, there's some weird noises. I think it's coming from Adi's body <laughs> in my undergarden. Um, I've had to mute him because it was sort of like a weird computer lady speaking. Um, oh. Mm. <laughs> <It's not> you. <laughs> it's, you are connected hi it's rosemary wow. you're you're a telephone operator <laughs> um hong kong fruit uh right retro raffle can you name three popular fashions of the 1970s so <clears throat> we want some fashion ideas and if you get them right you get a chance to be um have a designer make you outfits like these Woo! If you're oh, a man, man, yes, Mama, you can have those too. If you're a woman, actually, these are quite good. I, I would like these that kind of women. ones as a woman. As a woman, is you a woman? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was picking my nose. Then I've got a terrible hay fever today, <laughs> and I was actually picking my nose live on air. Um, luckily, I didn't get too involved in it. Uh, sorry about that. So, yeah, if you get the questions right, you can have um, the potential in your mind to um, have these outfits made, reproduced for you in your own fabric of choice. When I say fabric of choice, you'll have to go out and buy the fabric. You'll have to find the designer to make them in that style, but I can send you the pictures. The ladies' ones, now, here's the thing. I was looking at 70s fashion yesterday, day before. And um, actually, a lot of the stuff's coming back because 
those wide trousers, you know, some men, um, but women are getting back into them in the fashion stakes. It's coming back around, the flares, as they were called. I, or, I've just turned a couple of pairs of jeans into flared jeans. So That's I, the first time I've ever heard somebody doing that. That is just oh, I like outrageous. Love Someone turning normal jeans into flares. What do you do, a Trini Lopez on the bottom or something? <laughs> no, they were my sister's jeans, so they were a bit big for me. And I've got very... Uh, and they were boot cut, so they kind of slightly came out a little oh, bit anyway right. at the bottom. But then because my legs are so skinny, I took them in from the hips down to the knees so that they fitted my legs. So then the bottom part looks like big flares. Did you not so. put like that extra bit of material? Oh, that insert? No, yeah. no. But I did used to do that in the 70s. <laughs> I used to, because I had a sewing machine, then um, I used to get paid by my friends and my brother's friends mostly to do things like that, put inserts into flared jeans of like, pretty flowery cloth or whatever and then um also when it became fashionable take their jeans in into kind of like drain pipe jeans and yeah i used to um that's how i used to get my pocket money good on you wow. I, I like the flares bit the ladies dresses look a little bit like curtains and tablecloths yeah Not man so keen on them. <laughs> um well you're head of the head of the field i'm asking people what can you remember or can you name in writing down stakes, three popular fashions of the 70s. We've got Hello Peeps or Well Old Peeps, says Keith. Hi, Keith. Um, Hi. Christine loves the skirts. And Karen, who's um, not at work today because she's with us, we're so pleased, says flares, tank tops, and platforms. Yes. Steve Brady says bell bottoms. Oh, my word. Platform <laughs> shoes. Yes. And knickknacks shirts. All oh, knickknack shirts. I don't remember those. I, I, I just don't. I don't believe they were not around. I just don't re re remember them at the moment, Stevie. Tell me what is a knickknack shirt, please. Um, Elmy says, I've always loved flares and still wear them. There you go, Jeanette. You've got That's a little street gang. You, Elmie, we're, you, we're, Elmie, we're setters. <laughs> you know, probably get Lorraine involved. You can just be like roaming the streets in your flares causing trouble to people <laughs> it's chewing gum the yeah. outrageous <laughs> jean says hot pants hello oh yeah i remember Ma that. maxi dress and gypsy blouse yeah. oh what's that funny noise what's that funny noise i think it's um the essence of 80s trying to get through he's trying to come through <laughs> there was a sort of noise i could hear <laughs> It sounded like his voice. Go on, Tom. Go for it, Tom. I don't know. Um, what were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Keep up. You're supposed to be I listening. I love it. Yeah, you're paying attention and not drowsing while we're here. I was trying to um, get get up on Facebook so that um, I could comment. Oh. Uh... Because I, I was slightly late getting here and then we had the AD. The AD debacle. AD gate. AD <laughs> gate. AD <laughs> gate. Oh, uh, he's going to get a fix penalty notice later. Um, I, I seem to remember cheesecloth at some point being a thing. Oh, was you involved in the cheesecloth? Uh, I'm not sure I was, but I can remember people having cheesecloth. I did. Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah, cheesecloth stripy shirts with yeah. um, flared blue jeans. And there was a, I don't know if this was maybe 80s, but I think it was 70s, but like army jackets. That was 70s, later 70s, yeah. Sort of a punky new age time. Yeah. Um, Gene says you're a man multitasking. Well, half. I mean, I'm not sure I'm multitasking because I can't remember what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> um. Christine agrees hot pants and Karen adds tie-dye twin sets. I remember the tie-dyes. I still want to know what knick-knack shirts are. I'm I looking them up now. Yes, they're do um, tell us. We need to yeah, know this information. They're very patterned shirts, very patterned. Have you ever seen the band Surfquake? And oh yes, kind of, of course. Yeah, they're kind of that's their thing to really patterned shirts. Oh, they were knick knack that's kind shirts. of knick knick shirts. Knick knick. Sorry, okay. they were an iconic seventies disco shirt brand. Knick knick. Oh, she's gone. They've knick nicked Jeanette, haven't they? 
Oh, they've nicked Jeanette. The internet has nicked Jeanette, people. I'm really sorry about that. We're hoping to retrieve her. We're going to put a, a, warn, um, a wanted sign and some money that we'll pay. We'll pay. How much do you think we should put on the uh, reward poster, Tom? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Is she worth a lot of money? She probably is, especially if she's sort of like flaring her jeans. That's going to add value to her it as is. a person. Especially at the moment, if it's all coming back into fashion. Yeah, I mean, I'd go, I'd stretch to about seventeen forty-seven. I think that's a fair amount to put on a reward to find Jeanette. You, know, you could round round it down to fifteen quid, I suppose, couldn't you? You could, but it's it's more striking if it's seventeen forty-seven. People will go, oh, that's a bit weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> seventeen forty-seven. What the hell is that about? <laughs> She's trying to get back on. We've got uh, the, the the reward has come through. Uh, three, two, one. Let's see if she can arrive. Ooh. She can arrive in between. Yes, we oh, lost you. <laughs> it is one of those days. today. <laughs> well, we were going to put a reward poster. Wanted Jeanette. I <laughs> I said put about seventeen forty seven. Tom said <laughs> round it up to about fifteen quid. And Keith's <laughs> gone on. Keith's on there and says one million dollars. Oh. Oh, that's nice. Am I Genius. a million dollar baby? <laughs> and Steve said a million quid. So oh. both sides of the um, monetary scale. Gina says she's priceless. That's oh, good because we won't have to so say her anything. <laughs> we should go off line a little bit more often and get some compliments. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it was all happening while you was away. Oh, my God. <laughs> we <were> so worried. <laughs> that's just gremlins in the system, isn't it? Anyway. Yeah. I think a number of people have got those. Shell suits, did I read that? Is in oh, the 90s, says Dr. Jenny. And being a doctor, she would know when shell suits were around. Um, so let's just take those off the uh, off the stages. And let's have... Da, 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 no, that's not going to have that. We're going to have Memory of the Week. If I press the button. <laughs> memory, memory, memory of the week. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you sitting comfortably? Um, the Memory of the Week this week is a spin-off of the same thing, of the 70s. And it's just a question for you that you might want to share, you might not want to share. It'd be nice if you do share, because we like people that share. Um, what were you up to in the 70s? What was your, where were you living? What was your home life like, your family, your work? Or just general memories of the time. What was the 70s like generally for you? Any funny memories, interesting tales? Um, I'll go to Jeanette because she might disappear again. <laughs> Get me quick. <laughs> what were you up to in the 70s, Jeanette? I was at school all through the 70s. That was my school days. And um, I was living uh, with my mum and my brothers and sister and um, in Colchester, and I was going to mostly St. Benedict's School. Oh. Um, and what else? I was working, uh, I had a job after school on Mondays to Fridays in a yeah. kind of grocery shop, um, four till seven. It was a bit tiring, and then I have to do my homework. And then on Saturdays, I worked in a department, in the, the restaurant of a department store called Keddie's. So um, that's what I remember. And I, my friend was um, Gary Leach. And we used to go to gigs um, and go to London and have fun. So that's kind of what I remember, 70s. Is that, um, I was going to ask you about your monk. I thought it was a monk school, St. Benedict's, but uh, I won't ask you about that. It was a Catholic that. school. It was Catholic a Catholic school. school. I think it, it kind of still is. <laughs> Did that work in four till seven? Is that where you got your great work ethic? I think so. It's because I was so poor. <laughs> so my mum didn't have any money. So from age 13, I was working um, because I, she couldn't afford to buy me clothes and things that kind of teenage girls want. So, yeah, so that's what I used to do. And my when, I, when I was poor, often um, when I was younger, I was the same as you. Um, I remember going to school and often there'd be a hole in the um, in my desert boots or whatever I was wearing at the time, shoes, school shoes in the middle of the foot at the bottom in the sole and um every three days you would put new pieces of cardboard in the bottom 
And I remember once, I don't know if we just didn't have a lot of money. I, I went to school for two weeks with moulded um, football boots with the studs on. And I had oh. to walk all the way to school with the, <laughs> with the studs, which was ridiculous. Oh, gosh, that's awful. But, I don't think I did have shoes without holes. I think my plimsolls had holes in. But my shoes, they did used to hurt my toes sometimes a little bit. But and, and quite often they were hand-me-downs from my brother. But, yeah, no, it's kind of, I don't know, you didn't really think about it too much. Well. But I think when I became a teenage girl, that was kind of a bit trickier because girls want to wear nice clothes and don't want your brother's hand-me-downs. And so that was it. I don't think I was ever bought another piece of clothing or shoes by my by my mum from when I was like 13 as soon as I was earning money that was it I had to buy that everything was, myself why you went good on you how yeah. about you Tom I was gonna say it's probably because you were making your own clothes your mum thought oh, I'm not gonna give her I did advice. yeah no I literally had to just alter things so that they fit <laughs> but so what did you do Tom yes uh I, I don't think I was born in the 70s I think I was <laughs> <laughs> did we work out that we're about the same age Maybe yeah. you're i'm, an, I'm a year older aren't i than you are. that's right yeah yeah okay <laughs> um well hang on a minute hang on so when is your birthday what month uh october same as mine so you're already 60 no so you're not a year older you're a few months older Am I a few months old? Yeah, because you're January, but yeah. the next year, uh, aren't you? But you're that's right. You're, so you're well, literally sort of, two months, yeah, three months yeah, younger, yeah. older than me. Yeah. Wow. So we've got big birthdays coming up then. And we have, yeah, fifty, nice. fifty for me, and fifty for me as well. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do in the seventies? Yeah, what were you doing? Were you at doing? school. <laughs> right, I was at school. Yeah. I, I think it's a bit hazy, really, to be honest. I, I, I was. I think I moved. Was moved about quite a lot. Um, different. We we sort of moved from Mersey to Colchester, and then back to Mersey and things. And I went to quite a few different schools. Um, so yeah, it was sort of a bit weird. I'm not sure I remember a lot of it. Oh, bless you, bless you. I remember it going to school too, and tuck shops. I remember um, trousers that were for school, and you'd grow, and so your mum would turn. She start by turning them up quite a lot, and then she'd turn them down, and you'd have the line where they'd been turned, and then the another line where it'd been turned, another line, all the way till it was sort of like somewhere near your height, and it was about halfway up your leg, really, like you were a credible Hulk. Um, I remember. School was good for a while. I was quite did all right at the beginning, and then um, I also discovered pop music, and that was great. Seventies, and I used to sit in my room a lot. I backed on in Hackney in London, backed onto the railway station, and I used to love watching the trains go by. And I used to do charts. So you know, on the radio, you used to have the top of the pops type thing and the weekly charts. I decided I'm going to do my own because the ones that they were going to number one weren't the ones that I wanted to number one. <laughs> Particularly this for me was sort of that was around the end of the 70s because obviously I'm very young. Um, but, uh, yeah, I remember writing my own charts, especially in 1979 when there was like um, people like Good Night Tonight by Wings and I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor and the Bee Gees and Tragedy and things like that. Um, <laughs> before I discovered uh, pop music that I actually liked. That was really good. But let's hear a bit about other people. Christine, she was pregnant throughout the 70s. <laughs> Frankie, I thought it was only nine months. <laughs> nine she was years. fostering. She didn't say it. Be, I added that. I added that. That was very good. <laughs> she was fostering and she was very, very busy with children. Christine and Brian fostered loads of kids. And they used to, I remember her telling me that they used to make little books for them, of them oh, growing up. So like photo albums, I think it was, uh, that they would give them um, after they finished fostering them. What a lovely thing. What a lovely people. Yes. Um, even if he was pregnant in the 70s, of all of the 70s. Karen says she was at school in Ealing, partying, string fellows, going to various, various discos. I had amazing times. Lovely. Lovely. Um, Elmy says, Our busy. Kind of girl. <laughs> yeah, she's a party girl. 
that was one of the first songs I ever wrote, actually. It was called Party Girl. She is the life and soul of the party. Uh, what's that? About Carrot? Was it about Karen? Yeah, it was about Karen. Party yeah. Girl. <laughs> yeah, she was a party girl. Um, you were the life and soul of the party, sitting in the kitchen drinking tea. Those are the first lines I remember. <laughs> it. Um, it was sort of tongue-in-cheek. Busy looking after my three children, says Elmi. Two dogs and teaching part-time. Lovely snapshots to think sort of like um, of people in them days. Karen adds, I knew Johnny Entwistle from The Who. So crazy times. Oh, yeah, I can only imagine. Don't draw us the pictures. Dr. Jenny, she said, we came back to Colchester in 1974 after eight years living in Morecambe, Barrow, in Inverness, Kendall and the Norfolk and the Norfolk on our way back to Norfolk on the way back to Colchester. Kendall is in Cumbria. I know that because Will Harris is from there and it's near where my dad was born in Cockermouth. Power cuts in the early 70s. Oh, yes. Mm. Going to have some of them soon, the way we're going. Whew. Except you have to turn your own off because you can't afford it. Uh, oh, oh, don't get political. Uh, Keith says, early 70s, out with friends every weekend, climbing trees and wading through muddy water. Late 70s, it was gigs, discos and pubs, the golden years. They sound lovely, don't they? Yeah, I, I really like hearing about this. Jean says, work to m and That is Marks and Spencers, um, who are going to close down on the high street. Oh, don't go into the news cycle, Jono. Um, special Constable Jean Woolard. May I present the special Constable Jean Woolard? She'll be looking after your lo local needs. She got married and had children. Well done to you, Jean. She might have arrested me once. <laughs> it's coming back to you. Jeez. <laughs> special no, please don't arrest me special constable gene um tom doesn't talk like that so i don't know why i did that <laughs> karen also used to go to top of the pops you know they used to put a rope around about 20 kids <laughs> and they, they'd pull them somewhere in front of the, the axe and make them dance dance now kids oh karen oh, have you seen yourself on tv have you seen yourself in the crowd on top of the pops dancing? Because I always used to look at how they danced and what they were wearing and try and copy them. She might have been in Legs and Co. Because used, they used to go there too. Ooh, Pans, people. Pans people. Pans people. <laughs> well, remember, Tom, Pans people, an early version. Ah, oh, Kim, good afternoon. I was just about to say, where is Kim? Where's Ken? Where's Marie? How are they doing? We haven't seen them for a while. But you've joined us. Lovely to see you. You're with us. Um, our memory of the week, Kim, is what were you up to in the 70s? Home, family, work, general memories of the time. We'd love to hear what you were up to. It's really interesting because um, I love hearing memories. I love hearing social history, people history. And it's really nice hearing these little snippets of stories from people from their early days. And particularly for us in that we all were there at the same time as well, really, weren't we? Now, <clears throat> keep those memories coming. I'm going to see if Mr. Johnson of AD fame is available to come to our screen. He's well too young to remember any of these memories, but let's bring him forth and see if it works. AD, are you there? Hey. hey. Can you hear me? Oh, <laughs> you <laughs> He's such a trickster. <laughs> you blaster. Nah. Is, it, is it okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds great. You're coming out in a sort of foreign accent, but I think that's just <laughs> some. <laughs> no, you sound great. We okay. um, we heard some weird noise initially. There was a sort of electronic lady saying connecting. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know what that would have been. Um, so as you know, I'm now going via my phone. Never had yeah. any problems with that laptop before. It's always been fine. So don't know what what's going on there today. But now I'm on a new phone, but I had to buy a connector to connect my headphones to the to the uh, to the phone, and I didn't use a uh, an Apple product. I bought one of those sort of slightly cheap ones, much to my uh, dismay because it doesn't work, and that's what you heard the lady popping up. Oh, I see. There. So going just straight, no headphones, nothing straight in. <laughs> you didn't have to go out and run and run out today and buy that. No, I didn't. I bought it the other day and. Uh, discovered it doesn't work remember ad 14 days money back guarantee is all that's up. true that's very true well i bought it on the m6 somewhere so uh, <laughs> 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 
might be a bit spend more on and go back and get my ten pounds, you know. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, how are you? To see you all. Yeah, how are you, sir? Uh, apart from being slightly frazzled from all the running around and unplugging in and replugging in, I'm well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. you look well. You do oh. look really well. You look like you've been to um. Island. On a little bit of a holiday or a suntan in place, so oh. somewhere else. Well, um, I've had a shave. Oh, ah. so that may be. So I've got rid of all the fuzz. Still got this fuzzy bit, but fuzz bit face, fuzz. fuzz face. Get it? Oh, We're yeah. just reminiscing um, before your time of the nineteen seventies. <clears throat> and do you remember your family or anything telling you about those days? <laughs> Well, I was just dating for some of it, but <laughs> I do remember the tail end of it. Um, I believe, I was just trying to think what memories are from back then. Mostly it's sort of playing in dirt as a kid with like Tonga toys and things. But I do remember having action men when I was younger. Oh, yeah. And I dug out a photo the other day, actually, of an action man party that we had. <laughs> <laughs> and it, <laughs> Basically, uh, no, none of us pictured in it, but all our action men in the various tanks and things that were uh, sort of covered in grass and camouflage. There's a picture, a picture of those. So, uh, yeah, you know, boys' stuff. Yeah, but that was lovely. I mean, I remember it. Real hair, gripping hands, and the big one for me was the bit you pulled out at the back, and it says, like, reconnaissance, Julie. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You and don't forget the, the eyes. Eagle eye. Eye. Eagle eye. Eagle eye. Yeah. Yeah. I never had one of the uh, drawstring ones, I have to say. They're quite impressive. <laughs> well, I still got it. Sometimes I pull it out to impress party guests. No, <laughs> <don't>. your action <laughs> man what party. about the action man? Yeah, no, no, listen. <laughs> and we don't have party guests either. <laughs> I wouldn't matter. I should read out a few of these comments just because um, I'll lose track of them if that's okay. Um, uh, no, no, I uh, haven't seen me on top of the pop, says Karen, but they were ruthless, the cameraman, going into you. I bet, banging into you. I'm in a Who video, only for a second, though. Yeah, Hi to Kendalu, glad you're there, Kendalu. Jean says you're making me feel very old. Sorry, Jean. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Jean. We love you, Jean, really. John, John Sage, hello, John. He said, used to work on Saturdays in my dad's shop in South End. Good times. What kind of shop was it, John? Mm. Karen says, I'm in John Entwistle's biography. That's all. Mm -mm. Oh. Okay. Christine says, hi, AD. Lovely seeing you again. Hello, Christine. Steve Smith, he's back. And he says, hey, hi, Steve. all. Hi to you, hi, Steve. Steve. Our other Steve from the USA says, late 70s, I worked at the movie studio yes, where see. they shot the Bee Gees video for Saturday Night v v Fever. Wow. Wow. Can you do the dance? That's the big question yes and send us videos for that <laughs> he, he says we uh we all were all were wore nick nick shirts jean's son at action men and kim says always out with friends in the 70s saturdays was club night out dancing and looking after my sister's children while she went to work great times and john sage's dad's shop was a sports shop brilliant love it ad you're here as a wonderful person um, also, as a wonderful singer of songs, and what are you going to kick us off with, sir? Well, I thought I'd try something new. Well, yeah. I've, I've, I've played it before, so it's not really new. Uh, I might have played <laughs> it on the show, but it's not recorded, and it's uh, I'm kind of thinking, yeah, shall we go with this song? Up? Yeah, but, so it's a new song, it's called Sleepy Dog. Sleepy Dog, let's say yeah. no more. We'll get out of your way, we'll take ourselves off screen. We welcome once again, if I can find my window. And I can find. Oh, oh, got me again. oh yeah, oh yeah, Eddie. I've not. I didn't actually press that for you to come back on. You've got special powers. Oh, Let's hope it works. We welcome <laughs> once again, Eddie Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how we go with this. Who 
words fell to me. That was gorgeous, Adi. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. Lovely. I really like that. Thank you very much. Really nice. um, a great song. It's um, great hearing that. I could hear a little damp, damp down uh, string bit in one of the verses about the second or third along. Would... Oh, kind of like, yeah. I thought you was going to do that. Yeah, it was in yeah I thought I was going to do it as well. <laughs> <laughs> there was, yeah, the last one I was going to do that. I forgot today. But there you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to sound great um, on your next recording. You, when you were last with us, you spoke yeah. doing some recordings. Have had, you had the opportunity to get down to the studio yet? Well, I've had two. Um, uh, well, I, I, after, just after Christmas, I booked some time to go in to, um, to the studio. And uh, I went, I cut a track, which sounded nice. And then I went in the following day. And because I was doing it live, I didn't feel quite on it. So I thought, well, I'll book in the following week. And I booked a whole week off to go in and do it. And I was ill oh, for that yeah. entire week. Um, so that put stop to that. Then I went to go back to work. And then come half term, so I booked the idea of going in for half term. And then we had those big storms, didn't we? Yeah. Um, the studio mm -hmm. was basically, yeah, the trees came down and took the studio out for, for that week. Oh, God. <laughs> so I couldn't do it that week, and I'm back to work again. Um, so, uh, and I've been just been very busy with work, and obviously a tour recently and things, so. Yeah, you've uh, been on tour with Scott Matthews, yeah? Yeah, yeah, just, well, it's about two weeks ago now. So we, we did four dates in um, in Ireland, uh, uh, which was lovely, which is great. Yeah, so does it's been busy, you know. To, does somebody not want you to make that album? I think so. <laughs> I think it's trying to tell really me something. The yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I was going to do something this weekend, but uh, sorry, this this uh, Easter break. But now I've got um, a whole load of wood I need to shift from a wood store. <laughs> and I'm having to do all that. So uh, 
but it's time management. I, I'm hoping to, to get something done at some point. What was you going to say, Tom? I interrupted you rudely. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It's probably it's gone. It's gone now. <laughs> Well, the internet's been in touch, AD, and they're saying it's not fair on them. Other singer-songwriters aren't very disappointed because you're you're blowing them out of the water, mate. Um, <laughs> on the chat, they're saying applause from Dr. Jenny. More applause from Elmi. Karen says, wow, love it. Thank you. Steve Smith says, um, very nice. He's put a thumbs up. He's put something like, hallelujah. And some other <laughs> hand thing, which could be applauding, I'd imagine. It's quite small, and I haven't got my glasses on. John Sage says, magic stuff. Kim says, great tune, AD. And, and Marie's popped up out of the blue. Hi, Marie. She says, fab performance, AD. Oh, well, thank you very much, everyone. Very kind. Yeah, you've got to give others a chance, so we might have to... Um, <laughs> I don't know how much we can take of this. That was so nice, so good. And original music. Can't say fairer than that, can you? Um, thank you. Well, we'll pop off for a moment or two, Mr. A.D. Johnson. Thank you so much. So pleased we've got you connected. And it, by the way, it sounded really good on the uh, the motorway phone. <laughs> yeah. It sounded well, good. It wasn't breaking good. up or anything. I, I can have to view you all in a sort of an, an inch square. So, uh, but, you know, as long as it's coming across, okay. That's all good. <laughs> it's coming across fine here, and I think we're better viewed, other than Jeanette, uh, in an inch square. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, I'll see if I can get my uh, my my uh, flat screen TV up here and mount it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, whilst you go and do that, we'll pop off for a minute, and we'll see you in a moment or two. Thank you, AD. Cheers, guys. Cheers, mate. AD Johnson, that was lovely. Love that song. That was really nice, wasn't it? It was really mellow listening. And, and I was looking out the garden and, and the sunshine. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of be really nice. Kind of I imagine a nice weekend, sunny afternoon, sitting outside in a pub garden or something. <laughs> it would be really nice to have AD playing. Yeah. Meet me in the park, AD, on Sunday. <laughs> we'll, we'll have some music. It'd be nice. Oh, no, he's just gone off after that, Jeanette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a no. Yeah, it's a no, Jeanette. Yeah. No, well, you know what will happen? He'll he'll go into his garden on Sunday, and I'll be there waiting for him. Right. <laughs> Some mad stalker. stalker. You are a bit <laughs> Not stalker, but he is getting very low on milk. <laughs> yeah, that's my stalker Just joke. Don't bring any trees with you or anything. God. What? It was that storm was bad, wasn't it? Where we uh, it, um, yeah. a few weeks back. There Stop were things. Minutes. I think Nelson from Park and Ride said to me, um, I still haven't found my shed roof. <laughs> <laughs> Gone. Um, I acquired um, somebody's, I think it might be a barbecue cover or some kind of, you know, green garden cover of something. And I did put on the, the street WhatsApp group uh, a picture of it saying, this has appeared in my garden. Does it belong to anyone? Nobody answered. So it must have come from somebody further away or oh, somebody yeah. that's maybe not on the WhatsApp group. But, yeah, I I didn't lose anything. I gained. <laughs> yeah, we had a tree that had to be cut down and the shed doors were saved before they were flying off. Um by a massive nail. I found the biggest nail, or the nail I could get a hand on. It was so big, I can't see it on the screen. <laughs> It was massive. Banged that into it just to hold it in place. Anyway, John says, seen AD a few times live was brilliant. He is brilliant. It's time for Light Evening Snack of the Week. Light Evening Snack, Light Evening Snack. You've had a busy day and you want to relax. Light Evening Snack, Light Evening Snack. Go and brush your teeth so you get no plaque. Light evening snack, light evening snack, it's light evening snack of the week. <laughs> oh, Tom wasn't yeah. dancing, but your eyes were moving in time with the, the his music eyes were there. lit up. Yeah, his eyes were dancing. Yeah, he says that. He's look, he's on that internet again. <laughs> he's looking at trees falling down, all sorts. <laughs> Marie, it's, been, says, it's funny because I, I <laughs> we ended up with a roof in our garden so maybe it's nails maybe it's nuts. maybe it's nails <laughs> as long as there's no cows or anything like the wizard of oz mm, yeah a few few animals a few dead <laughs> animals 
Oh, don't. <laughs> Marie says, you're all looking and sounding lovely, making us giggle oh. as usual. Ah, oh, Marie, we like you. Come along every fortnight, please. Thank you. Um, hope you're well. Hope the family's well, too. Light evening snack of the week. What we have this week is... It's a white bread top off, a white bread top off. And it's um, first one up is I'm going to find a picture fish paste. Now, in this fish paste picture, you will find there is chicken paste as well. We've got salmon spread, sardine spread, crab spread. There's also a beef one. But if you ignore that and also here, I've got an extra one. That's Shippum's bloater. <laughs> Shippum's bloater. I mean, bloaters a fish, isn't it? It's not like the one you get in Sainsbury's, is it? Is it some like, yeah? <laughs> Did the advert go, Chippum's is the taste, it's the real taste of taste, something like that? No, I don't, I don't know. remember. Emma's, I'll get my coat. Yeah. Emma's, Emma's cousin's cousin worked for Chippum's. Did she? Mm -hmm. he, 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 yeah. Wow, what did he do? Mix the crab? He was a he was a food technologist, and Ooh. so he used to do the recipes. Oh, that's <laughs> wow! Wow, we should get him to come and do a talk about that. I mean, he lives in Chichester. It's quite a long way for him to come. Mm, we can't afford him, Tom. Sorry, yeah, that's a lot of money to <laughs> especially <of> money. <laughs> prices fuel these days. Could we pay him? I went online. I was thinking we could pay him in old Chippens jar bottles they actually sell them on ebay you can buy old chip and glass jars not a lot of them about they're rare um but yeah there's people sell everything anything and everything don't they yeah. um he used to work for campbell mm. soup as well oh my god he's a, he's a going to be a marvel of stories he's going to be like matthew crampton is with tree bore factories yep. oh, <laughs> Oh, we need to speak to him. We need to get him a, a, a recording of him at least. I'm so, sure he'll tell you what a bloater was as well. I bet he would as well, but I don't need that in my afternoon. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. That is going against, in this white bread top off, it's going against vague meat. Vague meat could be spam <laughs> or it could be pork luncheon meat. So it's sort of like shippums versus spam, crab versus luncheon. Good for snacks, good for munchun. <laughs> um, that nearly rhymed, didn't it? Um, <laughs> Karen's already got in there. She's not even seen the second choice, but she's saying chicken, please, for the, the spreads. Well, it's a spread against a luncheon or a vague meat. So uh, <clears throat> a t what would you call that? Jeanette, a flavoured paste, I guess. Uh, well, pa paste is, is what they were called. And in in French, in the French language, when they have the little hat over a letter, it's usually over an A, and it denotes where there used to be an S after the A. So in French, it used to be paste, but then they took the S away and put the little hat over the A. So now it's called pâté, but really it's paste. So all that you think uh, it's posher having pâté, it's no posher. These were just as posh as pâté. You're Maybe. so cultured to know all of that sort of stuff. <laughs> I just know a little bit about French, that's all. <laughs> Is that on the dark web? I've never read that before. <laughs> Did you not learn French at school? Oh, we oui. Très bien. Um, <laughs> je m'appelle Jean. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was, I was great. In the first two years, I was top of my class, and then I'd sort of lost interest. Or I might have did German, and it was like, das ist gut, ja? Um, and I forget it all. Let me ask the man in the middle, the man of the moment, um, Tom Hardy. Uh, if you're at a push, Tom, and you're thinking about a fish paste sandwich or a vague meat sandwich on a white bread, what would you go with? Oh, God, that's quite difficult, isn't it? It is so difficult. I mean, it's they're, both, difficult. they're both pretty horrible, aren't they? I mean, it's, it's, it's corned beef a vague meat. Oh, because I think that's meat that comes in a tin. And corned beef is lovely. I don't know. Can we allow corned beef in? Let's think. Well, I mean, that does say what meat it is. Mind you, that, that says pork luncheon meat. So that says what type of meat, in theory, it is. Same shape, isn't it? I remember <laughs> spam fritters at school. Yeah. 
They were uh, nice, but really greasy. Yeah, I didn't like them. Um, if you're allowed vague meat, maybe that's what I'd Yeah, you know, I don't like the shippens. Never like the shippens. I think um, Steve describes it well, mystery meat. Spam. <laughs> him. And it used to be, my mum used to cook what I called mystery meat. And I'd say, what sort of meat is that, mum? And she'd say, that's brown meat, son. And which just confused me more. And then I'd go to my bed crying uh, with an empty stomach. Um, <laughs> I do remember having the Shippums paste in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. Um, Jeanette, you, you're, not, you're not getting a choice because you're our uh, vague meat uh, stroke. <laughs> I'm the adjudicator. Mm. Adjudicator. Sort of memories of. Are you allowed pate then? Yeah. Me, no, not now. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know about Jeanette. And <laughs> um, I, I kind of, I don't know. I, I remember having um, paste when we were little because we'd get in from school and we'd we'd have bread and spreads for tea and just a loaf of very thin white sliced bread and then a mixture of different things to go on the bread and there was always a jar of of paste and sometimes it was a fish one which wasn't so nice. Sometimes it was a chicken one, which is kind of okay-ish. But we kind of go for cheese spread or sandwich spread and things in jars or sometimes jam, so bread and spreads. But I do remember fish paste. Um, but I do remember corned beef. And I still have corned beef occasionally now. When Lorraine's feeling really fabulous, maybe once every few months, she'll say, come on, let's have corned beef, egg and chips. Oh, it's heaven. Crinkle cut, homemade crinkle cut chips. Homemade. Oh. Who's who's doing the zigzagging on them? Uh, we've got a cutter. That, that, it's fancy oh. knife work, isn't so, it? It's yeah, nice. We do the we do them in the <laughs> oven as well, so they're not too greasy. So. Chips oh. in the oven. Yeah, oven chips. I make our own oven chips. What's wrong with you? Uh, we don't want a deep fryer. What's well, wrong with you? you know, we don't do all that deep fried. Are you stuff. having chips? I mean, <laughs> that's what they are. Isn't it? Oh, they're sprayed with a little bit of, you know, <laughs> rapeseed oil. But... They're not chips. They're just baked they are. potatoes, aren't they? <laughs> sliced, peeled, and sliced. I know what John means. If you do cook them in, in, uh, they've got to be in really greasy. Oil. <laughs> they're not necessarily greasy, but they, they're sort of, you know, it's coating everywhere, so it's not so good. So I'm kind of with both of you. I like yeah. both of you. It's basically oh, I've got to look at the scores. Okay. You've got to look at the scores. I'll read out the comments. Yeah. Okay. Um, Elmi says, no thank you to all of them. Yes. <laughs> Karen says, I'm staying with chicken, but I prefer corned beef. All <laughs> oh, the, the quandaries. Jean says sardine paste sandwiches used to fry slices of spam. There we go. Dr. Jenny says that's interesting, Jeanette. I didn't know that. <clears throat> Probably that's about the pate paste thing. Pate thing, yeah. Yeah. Kim says, I like both, but it has to be spam with Branston pickle. Oh, the decadence mm -hmm. of it. Do you know if you go to that shop, uh, Liddell, it's probably you haven't heard of it because it's quite upmarket. Um, they do a pickle a brown pickle that's very very similar to um branston i don't know it's probably called handsome or something like that they, you know they have the same sort of names um that's very good uh christine says lunch and meat for brian and paste for me my mum used to fry lunch and meat in batter oh blimey o'reilly i don't remember it being in batter but yeah maybe my mum used to make rissoles which were some sort of meat in in batter on a monday when we had meat left maybe sometimes it was spam and that i don't know uh dr jenny says evening snacks not in my life oh jenny <clears throat> so sorry kem says spam specially processed american meat is what it stands for oh oh is it really no is that right uh we have on our panel today we have american guests um who can only go in the chat unfortunately Otherwise, we'd have them live and direct from North Carolina. Keith says, difficult, Gen generic paste or vague meat? He's going vague meats. He's made a decision. <laughs> Dr. Jenny, she's with Elmi. No thanks. Okay, Dr. Jenny. So, so, and Tony James says, spam, 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 spam. <laughs> so hasn't, he got, um, hasn't he got the lurgy, Tony? He's not you got the lurgy, Tony. He's not allowed on. 
even online, is he, with that? Uh, he's got a mask on, don't worry. Okay. He's, he's oh, wearing a mask. That's okay. oh, all right. Phew. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's your chance <laughs> to vote. What How one do you prefer? That, Tom? <laughs> Sorry? How do you know that? How do you know he's got You told phone? me earlier. <laughs> Oh, oh, right. <laughs> oh, I, thought, I haven't seen it. I haven't named anybody on online, but you've just done that. <laughs> That's okay. I was just sitting here, mate. A great picture of that screen's all there, and we were all waving, smiling. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Spam, spam, spam. Um, anyway, Tam, Tony has got the lurgy. Yeah. And Kendalu says it's spam for him. Kendalu often has spam curry. I'd imagine. <laughs> or, or curry paste on his spam sandwich. Yes. <laughs> curry, curry paste on his spam sandwich. I don't know. I've got, that's going to take me a while to work out. <laughs> Tony's got oh. the dreaded C, which oh. we all know what that means. Oh, good luck with that. I hope it isn't a He's bad one. Cold, Tony. He? He's got a cold. Cold, yeah. Cold, yeah. Dreaded cold. Man oh. flu. A bit of man flu. <laughs> Let me take off these pictures oh, here. Um, man flu, isn't he? I mean, <laughs> don't know. I'm going to welcome back A.D. Johnson if he's available. He is there. I do believe he's been pondering what um what light evening snack of the week he's going to go for. Hi, A.D. Hello. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't know that you've ever had these in your very healthy life. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever wandered past the aisle of the fish paste or the spam and gone, mm, I'm taking you home with me, baby? Well, <laughs> I haven't been a vegetarian for uh, <laughs> 15 <laughs> years or so. Uh, neither, really, but I guess I'm going to have to. I do, I am part, occasionally I will have um, fish, you know, so a pescatarian. Or a mm -hmm. pescatarian, as I like to call it sometimes. <laughs> so I, I probably, you know, just by default, I'd probably have to go for the, the fish paste. Well, if there's a deciding vote needed, that will be the one that calls it of the day. And um, I think afterwards, if it does go to that deciding vote, we've got to work, get you a badge saying, I eat fish paste that you have to wear on your shirt every day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? To be honest, I, I think there's probably very little meat or fish involved in either of these products. Quite possibly, so, yeah. I think you might mushroom. be able to get away with eating. Mushrooms. Sorry, uh, I, I cut across you there. Uh, no, mushroom no. pate. Is that allowed? Oh, can, yeah. I, can we keep one way yeah, for that? Yeah, mushroom pate. We should have gone with healthy choices. <laughs> That's what I'd have. If I can have that. We've had some, um, <laughs> we've had some, veg we've had some vegan burgers recently. We eat quite a lot of vegan sort of stuff. Um, but the ones with mushrooms just taste much more meatier, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, um, I've got, there's something about that texture. About the them. texture's really good. Um, yeah, anyway, I should read a couple of comments if you don't mind. Ken says, no, no, ho, no, not spam vindaloo. Um, Keith, um, sorry, not Keith. Steve says, I read there was a naming competition. Brother of the Hormel executive submitted the winning name. In his submission, he said his name was short for spiced ham. Spam. Oh, spam. Spam. Well, that's where the spam come. That's another it's one. Spiced. I didn't know it was spiced, though. I thought it was really brown. Hard to tell, really. <laughs> Hard to tell, <laughs> isn't it? Spam. Fade all, memory. All that fat and oil around it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, AD, it's lovely having you back with us. What's um what's forthcoming for you um in the music game? Oh, um, yeah. Um, so, um, I've got a couple. Well, I've got some dates in May. Basically, the next next things that are coming up. So, um, on the twentieth of May, so that's not that should be upon us, won't it? I'm uh, doing a show with um, Chris Helm from the Seahorses. Yeah. Um, in town in Colchester at um, Three Wise Monkeys. So that should be fun. Lovely. Um, I've done a lot with Chris over the past, um, supported him in London and things, so that's good. Um, and then the following day on the 21st, I've just been booked to support um, Clive Carroll. He's, um, he's an exceptional acoustic guitarist, like solo guitarist. Um, I think trained as a classical guitarist, like myself. Um, but he kind of does a sort of a whole mashup of, sort of John Remborn style with a bit of Elizabethan loop music thrown in and this kind wow. of stuff. And that's so that'd be an interesting lineup, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that'll be Red Line in Manning Tree on the 21st of May. 
Um, and then I'm doing a, on the 28th, I'm doing a Ukraine uh, benefit all day at the brew house in Colchester as well. Um, there's lots of bands involved with that. I think it's through the Litter of Kings, a local band who uh, are sort of um, helping uh, pull that all together. Um, wow. So, yeah, that's what I've got coming up in terms of um, shows. Yeah. I'm sharing your Facebook page, which I just oh, did. You. Should we share anywhere else, like your website or anything? Um, yeah, yeah, people can go on that. So it's adjohnson.co.uk. Um, 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 but, you know, you'll find me on most platforms if you put ADY Johnson in there. Yeah, yeah, I'll put both of those at the Facebook and your own website. People can check him out. Do check him out. He's well worth it. And these um, these recorded albums are brilliant. Um, and they're well worth your time and effort. Um, and I totally forgot what I was going to ask you. So I will go to my, the, the lady upstairs, I like to call her. <laughs> Jeanette. Um, did you have a question for AD, uh, Jeanette, today? And uh, I, I don't have a proper question for you, AD, because I think yeah, all the years I've known you, I've, I've asked you just about everything musically. But I'm looking at your hair, and, and you're a bit fiddly <laughs> with it today. You, you keep kind of tucking it behind your ears and, and pulling it down. I know right. you've got very curly hair. And in the picture that comes up on the um, link that Jono's just put up to your Facebook page, you, you've got wild hair, which is great. Do you have to kind of try and straighten it and keep it tame? Is it a bit wild? <laughs> hair questions. Wow. Hair questions. Um, uh, I do. I actually do it into a little sick. I do. Yeah, because it will go quite crazy. I'm due for a cut, by the way. This is as long as it's going. But... Um, yeah, I, I, I sometimes put a beanie on after I washed it. Just to keep it a bit. Just to keep tighter. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it oh, always boy. looks lovely. I've never seen your hair looking bad. And I've never oh. seen your hair looking dirty. I think it's always really clean. <laughs> and I know I'm not allowed to sniff people's hair, I've been told. It's now oh. against the law, apparently. Is that, not to so sniff is that a, a habit that you kind of a little. Yeah. You've had I've to always done that. I've always done it. Yeah, no, me and my friend Gary, when we see people and they've got really nice hair, and if it's really clean and shiny, it doesn't matter if it's male or female, if it's nice hair, you just want to have a little smell of it because it just looks so nice and you want to smell the conditioner or, or shampoo or something. I don't know, just a thing. People say, you know, they'll give you their wrist and say, here, sm smell my perfume, and that's all right. But to just sniff somebody's hair, apparently you've got to ask first. Um, knew? It's probably wise, yeah. <laughs> I have never sniffed your hair at not knowing well, you, I, you know um when we meet in the I park will. you can have a good old whiff <laughs> i don't know what to say <laughs> as long as you don't ask sniff my finger it's fine just just say you're not around on sunday ad <laughs> i think she's a, i think she's coming round, so be careful right. yeah you've stumped him you've stumped the poor chap he's got lovely hair he um, has as of you, John, I like that picture you put on Facebook this week. Really tousled. It's lovely. I Rough love and it. ready, yeah. I think it was. Um, I like hair. Hair's I like nice. the one on the latest record, John. That's quite spectacular. Oh, it's hanging down. Yes. Oh, yeah. is, that, is that what it is? I thought it was like the wind taking it. Oh, off. no, it is actually the wind. It's the, it's the wind. Can you see Oh, that? yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the print has come out. I've got a super red face, though. Uh, the the uh, colour palette's gone a bit... <laughs> funny on the printing yeah that was a very windy day um <clears throat> that's my new album chipper but i'm not i'm not hip to promote that it's I'm here a really fabulous it. album it's great record, it. so, yeah. oh it's fabulous mm. really thank good. you Go thank you very out, much <laughs> thank you both for your support um uh, it's very much appreciated so onward we go ad johnson you've got another one for us anything we've heard before or this is an old one yeah um but i haven't played it in ages uh, Wild Like You, you remember this. Oh, I love this song, Wild Like get, You. And it gets, um, it seems to get a lot of streams on Spotify and things. It's got a few fans out there. So it's not one that I, I play very often, but um, I'm going to try and remember it and see how it goes. <laughs> I'm sure you'd do it lovely. Uh, cause it's a beautiful song. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting out of his way. Wild Like You, this is 80 Jump. <laughs> week this is on um, my uh, thank you for the good things ed somehow 
and smile when times are tough. You keep on going where all the skiers are. You're not denying some days can be trying. You smile and you pick yourself up. Oh, I wish I was like you. Oh, I wish I was like you. Is it God given or are you a race? And how come the hard times have not been in grace? You see the wrongs, but you don't see his thought. I love the sin you just make. Oh, I wish I were wired like you. Oh, I wish I were wired like you. Like you. You. Maybe there's a wire that's missing in me. Oh, I'll try to fix it if you give me the key. You saved us for love and we made the decision never to die for the fire. Oh, I wish I were like you. Oh, I wish I were like you. I said I wish I was wired like you. Oh, I wish I were wired like you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's beautiful, AD. It's such a lovely song. And um, it was, I was listening to it thinking it's almost like it's from another time, like in a way, like in the American 1930s. It's kind of something about it from the sort of great American songbook. And I've been listening to a lot of uh, Willie Nelson lately. Um, uh, yeah. I, I hadn't really listened to much before. And um, and Steve, um, uh, Steve Sparky, uh, who comes on the show, uh, was telling me about Bert, Bert Ives, is it? Earls? I can't remember. Yeah, Earl Ives. Earl Ives. <laughs> yeah, Earl Ives. Um, I just wondered, sort of like, not necessarily what the song's about, but who are your influences, you know, who, when you're writing songs? What, what influences you to go off and write a song? That's interesting, that one. I mean... I mean, that particular song came to me in the car when I was driving back from London. Um, the words and, and the melody. And so I, I actually recorded that on my phone on the way back. And then, um, then worked it out on the guitar when I got home, you know. And, uh, it's very, one of those rare things that comes. But, um, but you, know, I, you know, I like bands like The Kinks and stuff. So I love Ray Davis and and um you know the narratives that he sort of weaves in his lyricism very english sort of lyrics um but uh yeah you know the beatles and all the sort of classic stuff um dylan and all the obvious ones you know so uh yeah as well as listening to more contemporary stuff as well so yeah i mean i hear a thread of of the british songwriting line um right through ray davis on to Paul Weller, um, probably, yeah. even the American stuff of um, Tom Waits. Yeah. But, you know, if P if Willie Nelson, had, his name was on the record for Wired Like You, 
it, the whole world would be talking about it. It's that good. Oh. It's just a lovely song. And let me take a moment just to read you the comments. Danzy says, Jeanette, you're hilarious. She'll be sniffing your hair, folks. Um, <laughs> I'm quite fussy. <laughs> um, Karen says, another great song. Thank you. Karen. Keith, Keith's put loads of thumbs up. He's got mental on the thumbs up and the applause. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Elmy says, what a beautiful song. Oh, um, very much. Candy Lou says, nice song, AD. Kim says, so relaxing, beautiful song. Um, and Marie says, a pleasure to listen to you, AD. Oh, well, thank you, everyone. That's really um, nice. And I've been in a room hearing that for myself, and I always thought it was a lovely song. Yeah, and I think... Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of the time, like you were saying about where it came to you in the car, the songs, they arrive out of the air, don't they? You know, I don't mm. never question it, you, where the, they fly in from, into your brain. And just because you've practiced, you've you've learned your craft, you're ready to receive them when the thoughts come flying through the air. Mm. And um, I just think this, uh, it's a lovely one. Yeah, go ahead, Jeanette. And can I ask uh, both of you, actually, John and A.D., um, the way that you remembered that song, Adi, you remembered where you were when you wrote it. Do you remember every song where you were when you wrote them? And think about that, Jono, because same to you. Jono first. <laughs> um, oh, right, okay. Do you remember them, any song? Yeah. Just, you know, just yeah. some? Some of them, they're about people, they're about things I've observed uh, in life. Or well, sometimes what I always used to like, it's funny, AD talking about Ray Davis. I remember there was a Ray Davis documentary or he was talking about his work. And as soon as it finished, I went off and wrote a song. Um, and there are some that I'll remember exactly where I was, as well as other people's songs that I remember when I first heard it. And that might have been in my youth. And hearing it again might take me back to a particular road in a particular time of year in a particular place in my life and and yes yeah, some of them i do but not all of them i don't know about yeah. ad yes yeah, so similar really i think the ones that i tend to that, that i can sort of um, pinpoint a particular time and place are the ones where you have that little moment that little download moment as it were mm. you know the ones which are sort of um, taken a while to sort of craft because they obviously not, they don't you know they're, they're formulated over a period of time that's uh they're perhaps less inclined to associate with a particular time and place, perhaps. But uh, those ones, like the one, you know, that one in particular, and others, a few other others, they're in a minority. But um, you know, those are the ones where you kind of um, remember where you were and the sentiment that that, that in the, what inspired the sentiment of the lyric, that sort of thing. Yeah, and uh, weirdly for me, in answering a bit more, Jeanette, is that. The ones that have been most popular for me um, are often the ones that come together really the quickest. Yeah. Um, and they sort of all, almost arrive and they're fully formed within 20 minutes of you receiving the idea, the inspiration. And and uh, they're often the ones that, that do the best. It's really it's like, weird. It's like Paul Weller when he wrote and that's entertainment. He was supposed to have written it on, a, on the tube to sort of in like 20 minutes or something, all the lyrics. You know, wow. and that sort of just came as a stream of consciousness or whatever stream of consciousness that's a yeah. good way to put it um yeah Thank and it is a pleasure to listen sorry sorry Jeanette um really good answers exactly the kind of thing I wanted to hear from you both thank you yeah um well, go, go on. just say going back to Willie uh what was it not Willie Mason um Willie Nelson Willie Nelson his guitar to see I'm getting inspired <laughs> <laughs> oh, his pictures froze. It's oh, not no. quite like his. So, um, it's a bit. It basically, he's worked through the tabletop and it's revealed all the bracing inside. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. uh, a bit like you know BB King's Lucille or whatever he's named it. I can't remember he called it now, but this is kind of getting there. <laughs> getting there there was a, a picture that came out a few years ago now um somebody got a camera inside of a guitar and uh took a picture and it was like in these ornate halls it was just amazing oh, yeah. the, the the wooden architecture and people couldn't work out what it was at first but um there's a lot goes on beneath the skin of those guitars to make them um 
and the ones i think the most valuable ones are the ones that that give you the the songs they help you deliver the song um yeah and i've got a little tiny one a little cordoba guitar that i pick up every time i write a song there's so many songs it's written and i love it for that um yeah nothing like a new bit of kit to inspire and uh you know a new song or whatever yeah a new one brings new new songs thank you ad and um, we're going to pop off and we'll be back to you in quite a short while um but thank you for your lovely song why i'd like you and um we we'll see you in a moment mate. thank you again see you in a bit see you in a bit elmi sorry you she says sorry i have to go thank you for a smashing afternoon thanks for being with us elmi and I just add to that if you're not gone it was lovely seeing you in person we hope to see you again later <clears throat> this month in april now now ladies and gentlemen it's time for the one and the only poem of the week no Jono. sorry john stop stop, stop Jono. <laughs> stop. you know what um, I've, I've, I've not on my on my running order. I forgot that you've got to announce. Stop, Jono! What do you think you're doing, lad? <laughs> um, sorry, I forgot to announce light evening snack of the week. Jeanette, Just take over. Caught you before please. the jingle. Um, right. today's result, unsurprisingly, fake meat. Fake meat, fake fake meat, meat wins. Winner. I think that's because corned beef was allowed. <laughs> yes. Fake yes. Meat. Possibly. Vague meat on the picture, they've got eggs and vague meat there. Mm, that'd be like yeah. you and Lorraine, wouldn't it? Yeah, that, that's it corned beef, egg, and chips. Definitely. I oh, need to look at my running, now. my proper running <clears throat> order. One I've got that and have announced light evening snack <laughs> of the week. Sorry, lovely people. You now know that vague meat is the winner, the second winner of light evening snack of the week. If you want to add others, light evening snacks, suggestions please put them on the comments and we will look at them for the coming weeks or we'll think of something else. Jeanette, is it time? It is time. Play the jingle, Jono. It's poem of the week. It's sometimes short and sweet. It's poem of the week. And it's always magnifique. So today's poem... Um, I don't know why I chose this one. I saw it and I liked it. So my choice, isn't it? It's called I Wish I Had a Dragon and it's by Shel Silverstein. I wish I had a dragon with diamond studded scales, with claws like silver, silver sabers and fangs like silver nails. A dragon fierce and faithful, always ready by my side. A dragon to defend me or take me for a ride. I wish I had a dragon with eyes of shining gold who breathed a plume of fire whenever it was told. A dragon so ferocious, it might frighten Frankenstein, but not a lazy dragon who sleeps all day like mine. That was I Wish I Had a Dragon by Shel Silverstein. Um, I don't know. Um, I have no idea why that appealed to me. I don't know why I'm thinking about dragons, but I just liked it. It was nice. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It's got to be said. Quick, Mum, it's the ice cream fan. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember, I was remember when I did that and I accidentally played it when someone was singing a song or something. <laughs> 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 oh. Oh. Prize That's... time, says Karen. <laughs> Christine says, lovely, Jeanette. Thank you. <laughs> Karen says, um, great poem, beautifully read. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ken Saunders of Ken Saunders fame, a.k.a. Kendalou, says, nice poem, Jeanette. Thanks. Kim Saunders of Kim Saunders fame says, lovely poem, Jeanette. <laughs> and Marie Saunders of Marie Saunders fame says, ah, great poem, Jeanette. Ah, oh, they're such a lovely family. They are lovely. I want them to be my neighbours. I've got lovely neighbours, but I would like more lovely neighbours like them. It would be great. We could all do with Saunders. The Saunders is, is, is living next yeah. door to us. I think that's a, a, a show in the making. The Sorry. Saunders. I'm messing about. The Saunders, That I would watch it. That would be a great sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> it could be sort of like a, a drama with some yeah. light-hearted moments. They could do like reality TV thing, couldn't they? A reality like the TV. Kardashians. Yeah. At the home Saunders. Saunders. Home with the Saunders. That'd be great, wouldn't it? 
I'd watch it. I'd I was thinking it. it'd be more like The Simpsons and they could kind of, you know, have cartoons <laughs> of themselves and, and have loads of fun. Oh, I want the box set. Famous I, really, come on. I want the box set. Bring it forth. <laughs> Get it organised, Marie, Kim and Kim. Uh, Saunders. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> you can write the jingle. Out, oh, I'll write you. the jingle. Me or Dennis yeah. Waterman will be up for it. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's welcome our, our special guest, Aidy Johnson. Uh, before we do, actually, Christine says, thank you again for a great afternoon. See you in two weeks. Happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter, Chris and Brian. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Let's welcome Aidy Johnson back for the last time this afternoon. Aidy Johnson. Hello. So we've asked you what you're up to in the future. Um, we've took you from the past. Um, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? <laughs> um, that's a good point. We're going to go eat something after this because not really mm. had a little snackage before coming on. But so I'll do that. Um, I've got some students' exams to process. Ooh. So I should possibly be doing that because I've been not putting it off, but just not found the right time to do it. So because I teach guitar um, and um, there's an option now for children or well, not just children, but anybody who decided to take a instrumental exam that you can actually um, submit uh, video performances of them now. So um, uh, it's a case mm. of uh, sending those off and to the uh, to the relevant boards. Rock School, Trinity that? College, London, that oh, kind of thing. Okay. Jeanette? Um, I just thought of a question that I meant to ask you earlier, AD. Um, is it, hold on. Hold on, Jeanette. Is it about his hair? No. About, <laughs> no. About, okay, then. Go on, Jeanette. It's about music. This is what I should have asked you earlier. Sorry. I should ask you about your hair in private. Um, <laughs> when, <laughs> um, because you teach uh, guitar and yes. you, you work with music and you do gigs and you're on tour and things like that, does that take the joy away from just sitting around and just playing guitar for fun? I was you having this chat with um, drummer Sam yesterday when I bumped into him in town. And uh, it's something mm. you've got to strike the right balance with, I think. If you do too much of it, is the last thing you want to do when you get home is, is pick up the guitar. Mm. And so as much as I enjoy teaching, it does, yeah, it's, I, you just got to be, again, it's just the, getting the balance really, I think, because what your hobby then becomes your work and then it becomes less yeah. of a hobby. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I was, I was thinking that because um, oh, oh, I'm going to. Oh, Tom's got a question. I've got a question. Yeah. Oh my god! What what shampoo do you use, Ada? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be yeah, around the snake. <laughs> which one do you really want to know? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Jeanette might. Do. <laughs> Coconut's my favourite. LV, LV. Oh, yeah, oh. and conditioner as well, like for silky kind of what's it called, like proper like um, oil kind of um, oh, yeah. to give it moisture, you know. Is right. that the L'Oreal one? I think it is, yeah. In a kind of a yeah, golden that... and sort of orangey product. If we're talking hair, that's the one I use. There we go. You see, Jono? <laughs> great minds, great hair. Great minds, great minds, great hair. And I was thinking about your answer to Jeanette, because for eight years I used to uh, be uh, a moderator and listen to music, help new music get heard. Of course. And yeah. used to listen to up to 200 tracks a week. And I've not been doing it too late because I've been too busy with a warm and toasty club, but I might be nipping back and doing a bit soon. And I find it's a similar thing where you listen. If you listen to 200 new music tracks every week, it's a hell of a lot. And it's sometimes you've got to strike the balance between it putting you off doing your own music, mm. having to sort of like go through this. However, I at least don't have all of those um, performances to mark. And I, I take my hat off to you because... You know, it must be very time consuming to do all of that as, as as joyous as it is to see kids or or adults doing well in their exams. God, it must take ages. Yeah. Um, I mean, unfortunately, I don't have to do a great deal of prep I mean, and stuff. But like 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 some primary school teachers, I know, you know, doing a lot of preparatory work and marking and stuff. I think we're you know, there's an element of that in a peripatetic teacher. Um, yeah. It's easy to think. Um, yeah, the, the, the hours work 
um, you say oh, I did 20 odd hours a week teaching, say it's a bit, it's more than that. But then when you add all the other preparatory stuff and um, the uh, other bits and pieces, um, administration, that kind of stuff, it soon tops up. I and mean, before you know it, you're doing quite a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Anyway, thank you for that, Aidy. I just noticed the time. It's half two, so we oh. should get out of your way and welcome you for your last performance. We'll say no more, but let Aidy have the floor or the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last time this afternoon, Aidy Johnson. Thank you, gang. I played this one before. I'm going to play it again because I like it. <laughs> song called The Glass Tower. Great stuff, lady. Thanks so much for being on the show. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure Always. having you with us. Um, we're going to head off now, and we wish you well and your future endeavours. I'm just going to put the end screen up. Thanks to Aidy. Thanks, of course, as always, to Jeanette and Tom. Uh, my name's Jono. We are the Woman Toasty Club, and we will be in Shrub End on Monday at 2 o'clock, Shrub End Social Centre, if you want to be joining us for an in-person afternoon. If not, we're back here in two weeks' time, uh, Friday in a couple of weeks. Have a great Easter, and um, we'll see you on the other side. Thank you all. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thanks, gang. Bye. Bye. We've all got a tale to tell. Times were not always so. But putting it all aside made it through 
by and by. It's warm and toasty in here. Share our laughter, sometimes tears. You'll be welcome with a cup of tea and a biscuit, maybe two or three. Wrapped in a little white cloth, cooking for hours in the old iron pot. There's a jam roly poly for tea. Enough for you and Dad and Grandma and me. What did we like the most? Fish paste sandwich or peas on toast? Nothing could come close. The bubble and squeak the day after our sun. 